I'd like to welcome you to the master class in drawing. My special area of interest today is drawing the human figure and in particular drawing the construction of the human hand. My name is Jocelyn Morn. Our model over here is uh, posing his hand in three different positions today and uh, we're going to try to analyse the simple planes of the hand and the simple structure of the hand. People often find hands very difficult because they try to draw details first. So we're going to block it in. Now blocking it in means seeing it in blocks. So we're going to look at the blocks of the wrist and arm as they come down. I'm drawing here with a graphite crayon which is enabling me to see it in those simple uh, planes and blocks. So we've got the plane of the wrist coming down meeting the plane of the back of the hand which is a, a rather simple wedge-like plane and into that we're going to develop the, the fingers and the axes of the fingers in their very simplest form, blocking them in in groups. And rather than trying to draw a finger at a time, those two fingers are, are working together as a team. This one is slightly separated and so we're just going to plan that. We're going to look at the angles at the end of the fingers, the way they relate one to another and over here we see a little bit of the thumb. I'm drawing the little finger side of the hand because that's one of the most difficult and, and I think that people often find uh, the, the fact that the little finger is rather small, acts almost independently of the other fingers. It has its own actual tendon which is separated from the other tendons and uh, it's quite a difficult area. So here we go. We're now going to look at the planes, grouping those planes across the back of the knuckles there. The, um, the finger joints there and around about this moment I'm going to pick up my 6B pencil and I'm going to draw into that now and I'm just going to reanalyze what I put down in very very simple movements. There's the knuckle of the ulna over there coming in and fitting in there and there you can feel the palm of the hand coming from around the back and flattening out a little bit because there's quite a bit of pressure onto the paper as, or surface of the table as he's pressing down there lines coming from round the back like that give you the sense that that's moving around behind the wrist there and we're coming again around I'm redefining what I showed you in the beginning now when the hand is flat down we're not very conscious of these knuckles they they're flattened down as the continuous plane of the back of the hand continues down into the fingers however we start to become very conscious of the ellipses around the end of each finger because each finger is like a a rod coming out like a miniature cylinder and you can sense the shape of the bones because really each bone is like so with a shaft in the middle and knuckle at either end and there's actually a slight arch to the bone like that so if we feel that coming through the flesh it'll give us a better idea of what we're drawing so there's the knuckle at the end there there's the other finger coming through to there drawing this fairly simply for you uh, the, we're not very conscious of these joints at the end but we are aware here of the way that finger flattens down and we can actually see the ends of those fingers there as you can sense them as planes coming through there very simply feeling the bones through there and coming through and this one bending slightly down so it's turning away from the light source a little bit more there and coming down and pressing against the thing the surface of the paper here again we're conscious of the little finger filling out to that joint. It's a short joint through there, short bone section coming through, widening out again through there. See how I'm drawing ellipses around the finger, making myself aware of the three-dimensionality of that finger, and again being aware of the end of the little finger. Now just a little bit of detail there. We are conscious here of the end of the hand. You can see a tone there where the, the flesh of the end of that surface or wedge of the hand we're very conscious there of the tendon coming out through there. Notice how I've actually changed the grip on my pencil there. So I'm actually drawing with a little more analysis there now. And this would be necessary at this stage of drawing. Now here we're feeling that coming out. and just doing a little bit of detail to show you on one finger, just the sort of thing you need to be looking at. And watching again those overlapping forms. Otherwise, if you draw it as a continuous straight line, you will have a very flat drawing but by watching those overlapping lines you're getting an awareness that each section comes out in front of the other section and one very important thing too is the way the fingernail fits in and watching the direction of that sometimes you're not very sure with a little line how its direction is so if you draw it a little bit longer than it really is like that you can say right that fingernail is at that angle because that finger is tipped 
over very slightly like that. Uh, this finger is turning again this way, so this nail is doing that. Uh, this one is slightly over, so that fingernail is doing slightly, so there's a slight elliptical feeling doing that. I'm doing a little arrow, but you can see there what is happening. We are actually seeing less of that bit of flesh between the nail and the end of the finger there than we were in this one, because this finger, like a big cylinder, was coming out at us like that, and we were seeing the end of it, whereas this one was turning away from us like that, and so we didn't see much of the end of it. And of course, by the time we get to this one, we're really not seeing much of the end of it at all, because it's, the finger is pushing down into the table and doing like so. And when we're looking at the thumb over there, we're actually looking at the underside of the thumb. We don't see much of the thumb there, but we're aware of it as a plane. You could almost draw it as a pointed wedge coming like that, and you wouldn't see the fingernail at all. It's right round the other side like so. So that would be kept fairly quiet and what we would have there is again feeling that coming out. You're almost aware there of the joint of that. You can almost see the two condyles of that joint because in actual fact the end of the bone looks like that. So we're aware there of that little plane, a bit like a small miniature kneecap and then you see a bit of flesh coming from round the other side of it. But you can see basically the idea of keeping it very, very simple to start with. I'll just revise that a bit. See, what you've got here is the, the arm coming down, this very simple wedge-like form as the arm comes down and fits over into this wedge-like plane of the hand that does that. Now, that's very, very simple and diagrammatic, but it makes it much easier to analyse what you're doing. Now I'm going to get our model to turn that hand into a fist now and show us the, what happens to those knuckles when we turn it into a fist. Now here we have, well again I'll go back to this graphite crayon because it just makes it a little bit easier to draw with, and we've got the arm coming down again, similar to this, as we had last time, but we're a little change here. Instead of this arch, we've now got a concavity here, and we've got here the back of the hand coming up towards us, and we've got the side of the hand, which we had here, still doing that there, not very strongly lit because of the lighting, but we're very conscious there of the knuckles. So we put some tone right over those planes there, the, the fingers doing that, and we now can see the thumb coming out over there. Now, in a few simple pieces of tone, we've established that fist there quite, quite easily there. Now, what is happening here is that we're much more conscious of the ends of the joints where they're turning over there. Okay, so we need to look at that. We actually can even see a little bit of the far side there as that's turning around. So each of these joints, and this is what I wanted to talk to you about, is the way they, they're pronounced. Now the hand is basically a puller, okay? We are designed to hunt and gather and pull in, okay, to get our dinner or whatever we're doing. So we will find that the muscles on the front of the hand are the things that pull in. And this finger, our second finger, has one of the biggest joints because it's a real puller opposing the, the thumb. I know this is good for delicate little work, but if you really want to pull your dinner in, it's that you're going to do if you're a hunter-gatherer. And so that joint is quite strongly pronounced there. Okay. Now again, we need to look at these simple forms. They've been grouped together. We are conscious of the planes of the back of each. There's a very slight... Uh, there's the joint at the end. There's a slight feeling that it's doing that. If you could do a little cross-section, you would have a plane doing that and a slight lightness there. Then you'd have the next plane, of the next finger doing that, like so, and turning. There's the joint, the knuckle. You almost see the two condyles there, and it's turning back. Here again, we have the tendon, which is coming down over that knuckle, quite strongly there, marking that. And here again, on the little finger side, again, we get that strike, strong tone, and this little finger has been pushed up a bit at us. So again, we're getting a slight change. We've got to convey the fact that that joint is actually sitting up and there's a little bit of it going away underneath us. You can hardly see that. But I'm again reducing it to a very simple diagram. And there's a slight arch through there, as you'll notice, right? Okay, so that's turning away from you there. Okay, again the overlap, again that there. And there's a nice piece of flesh that's been creased in there, and then this, the palm of the hand coming under like so. Back up here, we've got the arm coming down, the joint, again, of the ulna, just that little condyle as it fits into the wrist bones like so. And in this position, we're starting to feel some of those tendons. Here's the tendon of the little finger, again, slightly separate, 
and here's the tendons of the other three main fingers, they're grouped together, they come through the wrist at that position there and you're quite conscious of that change there as they do that. Now this comes in there, this comes in behind that, so there's quite a strong plane through there as that fits in behind. I'm drawing this fairly strongly so that you can see it and you're just aware of that piece of flesh as it goes round to the thumb on the other side there and you just can see a little bit of the thumb again that wedge shape not much different to what we had there showing the underside of the thumb again a tonal plane will, will help you I use tone to explain those planes because a line alone is not sufficient it won't give you the information that you need and you can if you wish you can often use your putty rubber to lift out some of those things just if you wish to say well okay that's the side of that knuckle because as that knuckle turns it's like a little thing that's turned away from our light source like so and so we've got light middle tone a little bit of reflected light they're like miniature little bits of still life really each of those knuckles and if you really want to analyze what they're doing you know you need to look at those in out in out and around forms like so okay now I think that's probably sufficient just to show how that has changed from this very flat where the knuckles were hardly any different there was just a very slight change of tone hardly any awareness of the difference in those knuckles the plane almost flowed continuously down to this abrupt change of plane that we are getting in that one there and I'm just keeping it very very simple so this is another very difficult position that people often find very hard to draw and that is the foreshortened hand coming towards you with the fingers tipped up it's one of the most difficult positions to draw I don't know why I'm making it hard for myself <laughs> okay here again the arm coming down and the plane of the main mass of the palm of the hand a very foreshortened thumb coming out at you now foreshortening means that it has shortened due to the perspective of the position we're seeing it in it hasn't in fact been shortened but because of the position that we're seeing it in it looks shorter and we recognize that when we're drawing now so that thumb now has, it really looks quite small because of the position we're in the, again the big muscles of the palm of the hand those big pulling muscles and we're blocking in that and noticing the feeling of the palm of the hand Now, when we're drawing the palm of the hand the front part of the hand is actually goes past the knuckles on the back it's longer on the front than it is on the back it's important thing to look at those things I think now again when we're blocking in a difficult position like this we group things so here we're grouping just as a mass we're grouping those two fingers we're grouping the next finger all the time being aware of it coming out of the end of the hand again it's tipping and turning over and coming back up like so quite quite tricky there we're looking at the end of the finger which actually overlaps the other two and then we're coming to the last digit finger coming through here again considerably foreshortened and ending up about that position there and it's quite amazing that that quite big hand has been the fingers have been reduced to that area and that's something you need to be aware of again lovely overlapping in the wrist and the arm feeling that coming down through there you'll have a nice plane down the side of the arm because that'll help to give thickness to the hand and arm so we've got really sometimes it helps to draw cross sections it often makes you aware of your form it's just a, a very useful drawing technique something like that is especially when you're studying a thing to say well okay if I had to walk across that as a little ant this is what I would find on my way around and it does help you to to analyze that form quite well there okay I'll get back onto my 6B pencil I need just a little more analysis there and I'll just go back again as I did on the other drawings and just analyze those planes a little bit more here's the again looking at that big thumb muscle there that big pulling muscle and feeling the way it fits into the palm of the hand fits around and comes around there and you're really quite aware of its three-dimensionality there and and it's important to just use your pencil to cuddle the form okay again I'll use the tone on the back of the thumb very tricky position now, I've got to look at the angle of that knuckle if you're not sure do a little like that I know it's a bit diagrammatic but it often helps you to say right what is that knuckle doing it's going across it that direction okay and then that that will then there's a lovely little narrow section in there then there's another piece of joint there which again is agreeing with that one okay and then it's coming down through there you see what I'm doing coming down and we're actually going to draw the end of the fingernail 
So again, the fingernail again agrees. So there's an agreement all through those planes of the thumb. And then we might have a little bit of tone on the end of the thumb because it's turned away from the light, and that will help us to explain that that's the side of the thumb and that's the end of the thumb. Very diagrammatic drawing, but I think if we're going to, to help you to draw a hand, we need to be fairly diagrammatic. We'll have some tone along here, just as we had tone on that side of the thumb and tone on that side of the arm, because those are the pieces that are turned away from us, we'll also have some tone down the side of the finger there, because that whole piece is the turn around. I think that will help consistency, and consistency is important if you're going to understand what you're doing. And we can just, just barely aware of that ellipse, it's just a crease in the form, the lighting isn't showing it very well, but we can look for that. So a lot of drawing is knowing what to look for and finding it. So we're adding to what we see with what we know. Just think about that, adding to what you see with what you know. And uh, that's why we study anatomy, so we can find out more of what we're looking at. There's actually a pad on the hand there, and I'll use some tone there because what is happening there is that the plane on the front surface of the hand turns under a bit to meet the fingers. It's part of that turning surface which the fingers or the ellipses of the fingers fit up into. I'll just take a little bit of rubber across that, clean that up a little bit so that's a little bit clearer for you. That's again, uh, that little joint on that finger has been so foreshortened there that that joint between there and there is hardly visible. And then we're getting this joint now. We're now going to look at the underside of that finger make that a little bit clearer for you there. It's really just a plane. And we're looking then at the end of that finger as it's been turned up. See how difficult that is to explain that? There's the fingernail, right? And there's the end of that joint turned up. And we're probably just able to see the knuckles, just a little bit, that end of that bone there. We'd need a little bit of modelling to soften that a little bit, if you have time, but we're just trying to make this fairly simple for you. Here is this other finger, which we only had blocked in. And here it is there, and it's turning under there, just as the other finger was turning under. So we've got to turn it. We've also got to turn the side of it. So we have a side and an under. Right? Look, it's just like drawing a still life box, really. It's a more complicated piece of still life. Often students wonder why they're given still life to draw first. They don't always see that relationship of why we are drawing very simple things like boxes and cylinders. Because when we come to the human body, we've got boxes and cylinders. They're just a little more complex and a little bit more hard to sort out. Okay, so there we have another finger, again turning under, again, just as I've turned each one of those under, like so, and here's the end of that knuckle, just, just a bit on view there. Okay, there's a little bit of that one. There's the palm of the hand. We can keep the tones light there. We might even, although it's not shown there, we might even use a little bit of tone to turn that a little bit, because we want to be able to explain not only is that form turning away that way, it's also turning away that way. And so tone will help us to do that. And just a little more explanation on the end of this finger here. Uh, if you have time, you could sit down and do a beautifully shaded drawing of that. You could even get out your very fine uh, 0.7 um, 2B pencil and you could crosshatch and you could model and you can show that there's softness to the flesh or boniness to the flesh, you might say, oh, look, that's a little bit different there, that little, that's coming up and fitting into that. Oh, that's a little bit, little, it, basically what I had, you know, I, what I had was okay, but there's more detail. Now, that is a thing that time, if you have that time and just justified, you know, I think that's a, a, a good thing to do at some point of time because that really teaches you what you're drawing. It's all very well to do lots and lots of quick sketches, they're very good. But sometimes people only survive on quick sketches and they don't know anything else. And your quick sketches will always be better if at some point of time you sit down and do a really analytical drawing. So that would be something that I think every art student needs to do. But you do need to do the blocking in. The blocking in doesn't change. The blocking in is still there. The only thing you might do is block in a little lighter than I've done. If you intend to do a detailed drawing on top of that, you would need to block in a lot lighter than I have done so that we can do that. Now we show one more position of the hand seen from underneath. Okay, so we have here a hand which we're going to see coming in 
from this position. So I'm seeing it now from underneath and I'm going to draw the thumb side, which in some ways is considerably easier than drawing the little finger side. So we have this large thumb muscle. Um, come back to our piece of graphite. It's always easier to block in with a piece of graphite. It's much easier. And uh, I do recommend it as a nice, simple way of, of uh, seeing what we're doing. Okay. Right, hands going away. We can put some tone on the underside of that wrist there. That will be the thumb coming through there. We'll have the underside of the hand coming through. Again, the foreshortening of those fingers. This one curling down, coming through there. The next one curling under, like so. It's so much simpler when you... And we can use the, the plane of the tone underneath to achieve that. I'll just rub the end of that finger out, so I'm drawing right across that. Okay, so we've got this thickness of this hand here coming through. Again, we're very conscious of the thumb joint. That's beautifully lit there because we've now got that slight turning away of the thumb there and filling out through there. I'm drawing this thumb first because it's one of the nearest things and I just want to establish it as a fairly strong tone. We're aware of the uh, fingernail through there and we're aware of that turning up through to there. And there's a lot of folding because of that position. The flesh in there is folding rather nicely in under the thumb. We're getting some drapery in our human flesh there. And we're coming up through to that. And that's tucking under. There's the thumb joint. Quite strongly marked there. We're actually quite conscious of the joint there. It's actually getting a slight hollow in the form there. So we're, we're, what we're getting is there is the bone being quite pronounced, thinning out, widening out again through there. So we again need to watch that agreement through all of those planes. Okay, and then we're turning this under there. This is where you can use cross hatching or shading to turn that lovely big rounded form and tucking that under there. It's quite a lovely, powerful, massive form there. And you can feel just a, a short piece of that piece there, which because of our position has been foreshortened, as you can see there. And then we see the wrist. I'm going to lower the wrist from my first statement. I'm going to bring that down to there. Now the hand could have dropped or I may be re-looking at it. That's something that you do when you're drawing. You make decisions. Do I change it? Do I go with the fact that the model has changed? Or have I re rethunk it, <laughs> rethought it? And uh, do I want to make those changes? And that, that's part of drawing, to keep that going, okay? Uh, we've got, again, an analysis of this finger fitting in there. I'm going to raise that joint a little more than I had, up to there, and then I'm going to change that angle down to there. So we're seeing underneath that joint there, I'll just use my rubber again to establish that turn, and a lovely piece of, of angle through there. So it really, you're very, very conscious. See how I'm drawing that little arrow? And I'm doing that for teaching to make sure that you're very clear about the fact that these changes happen. I think that's where students find it very difficult because they only see what they see, which is the subtleties, and they don't analyse where the thing has changed or what its direction is. There you are, there's another plane, and you can see how the end of the finger joint is turning away. We're seeing less underneath and more of the end as it's coming towards you. See how that is changing? And we're just seeing a little bit of that fingernail at the back. So the finger has rolled over to the point we're seeing less of the underside and a little bit of the backside. That's rather lovely, isn't it? Okay, it's quite, quite, quite a lovely piece of turning form. And uh, once you understand it, you can pretty it up and shade it as much as you like, but the understanding has to be there. Here's another one where this is now turning. Oh, that's lovely. And there's that's coming through to there. And then it's turning right under like that. So our, our wedge form has turned under like that, and we're really seeing the back of this finger. I'll actually rub that little bit of light out so I can see the end of that finger there. There it is, and it's coming through. I'll actually rub that out in case that's confusing you there. So that now has turned right over, and there's the fingernail. We're seeing more of that fingernail as it's coming right down, and there we're seeing the tip or the end of that finger turning over towards us. Isn't that lovely? And then we're seeing over here this joint is very, very short, a tiny bit of that. It's even got itself separated for the other finger. There's a little background space I can see in there. And here's this other joint now turning right under. We're really seeing the back. See how it's rolled right over? We're seeing all of the back of that. And it's turned right under to there now. So we can make adjustments. That's what this lovely kneadable rubber is doing for us too. And you see how that's turned right under like that. 
and we're seeing the full back of that fingernail now. So it's turning under like that. See, that's a lovely, lovely piece of structure. And with a little bit of tone, you can analyse that and say, well, I don't want that quite as light as that because it's in the shadow under the, under the other hand. And you can crosshatch. See how I can turn the shading by using some slight tonal movements. I can turn that round and cuddle that joint and really feel that. Okay? And, uh, and then you've got the back of the rest of the hand coming through underneath and continuing through. And notice the angle across there too because that's part of that plane that's showing you the underside of the hand. Lovely joint here and it's just, you can just see on the other side of it, it's fitting into those lovely folds that are coming down and under the thumb. See that little bit of difference made the feeling that we could see the other side of the thumb. And that's coming through onto that joint there which we're now quite pronounced there and that flatness as it comes around the joint, see just a little bit of tone, so we have the light on the top and coming around, and then you can feel that coming out from underneath. That's passing behind, and again, we're getting a little bit more fullness. We'll just use our rubber there, and just fill that out a little bit as it's coming towards us there, and a little, that little bit of flesh on the other side of the fingernail there, and the roundness of the tip of the joint there, and we're actually getting a bit of delicate shading around there, which is just going to show you that slight rise that we get where we get a little bit of flesh coming up, and then again a little tone just as it fits in around the fingernail. You see how that fingernail is fitting into a little slot of form there. We'll just rub out that little diagonal line, which was a piece of construction line that we've rethunked, we thought, and we'll just have that coming around again, coming through to there. See what a difference that makes just to feel that roundness there. Now you can, if you have time, you can actually even use a finer pencil, as I said before, if you want to do some fine cross hatching to show the quality of the flesh and even turning the direction of your strokes can be quite helpful to feeling the form. Uh, you really need to remember that contrast comes forward, so you really need to, to build up tonal contrast, even quite strong dark there to push that, or even to soften that dark back there by putting some tone on that or toning the flesh behind it a bit, so that again, that goes back. Otherwise, if you have too much contrast back there, you won't have the thumb coming forward as strongly as you want it to be. Again, you can even use quite strong line uh, to separate that from the palm of the hand if you wish to, to bring that right out and feel the roundness and the end of that thumb. It's quite beautiful there as it's coming through. And then you can use softer tone back there onto the wrist area if you wish to explain those pieces of flesh there and, and the feeling that the wrist is joining into the thumb area there. Again, using the cross hatching is quite a useful technique as long as it's not uh, a technique in its own right for its own scratchiness, but using it to model the form is quite lovely because you can criss and cross and feel the form and actually use the strokes as Dura did and Michelangelo did to feel the volume as it comes around. You can tuck your pencil in and out of those folds and the flesh is very much like a piece of drapery fold as it moves in and out of the form there. So that, that difference that that makes there to, to give you that analysis there. Okay? I hope you have enjoyed this study of drawing the human hand. And the only way to practice drawing the hand is to do lots and lots of drawing. My suggestion is you do as I do. Take a sketchbook on every train journey or ferry journey that you do and draw every pair of hands you see in front of you and this will give you plenty of practice. Thank you.